how do I actually find something to use Graviton on in my AWS environment? Where do yeah. I go? What do I do? Well, so this was actually some of the reasons that we started looking for ways and tools to help enable some of our customers. This was born out of looking for some opportunities in our managed service. And Matt actually called this out as this is such an easy way to get started with Graviton. Um, so I was working one of, with one of my customers. Um, I cover our media, entertainment, games, and sports customers. Um, and so I was working with one of my customers on trying to be a little bit more granular on finding RDS Graviton opportunities. And we'll show this a little bit more, but moving to Graviton for some of these managed services, because a lot of that infrastructure is inherently managed by AWS, it's quite easy to move. And all you need to do is really understand um, in the instance of RDS, what engine version and engine number you're on. Um, and then there is a very clear path to moving to Graviton. Some of those you can just immediately move. Um, and that can just be as simple as uh, click ops in the console or updating some of your infrastructure as code. And then there's also a lot of strategies where you can do multi-architecture deployments and see no downtime. Um, so we started with RDS and, and ended up expanding to um, some of the other managed services, and these went into the optimization data collector, actually, that you linked earlier in the episode as well. Um, so kind of the next steps after that were, one, to expand to EC2, where this is has the most opportunity for a lot of our customers, just being compute, uh, being most people's largest spending service. Um, and then as well, to bring some more visualization and understanding to some of the data that we're presenting. Um, so similar to some of the other very engineering oriented dashboards in the CIDs, uh, like the trusted advisor dashboard or the compute optimizer dashboard, some of those visuals I find super powerful to better understand some of the recommendations that are coming out because there can be so much data. Um, so the next step there was how can we get some of these recommendations into the most palatable form for some of our customers? Awesome. So that's a little bit of an overview about how that was born. Um, and so now, uh, just to live up to the hype of that great transition slide, I'll, I'll walk you guys through a demo. So, so this is a, a, a sample dashboard that we have. This is just running in my own account. Um, we also do have demo dashboards available for you in that workshop studio that Savannah linked to. Um, but as you can see here at the top, we have uh, four different services. Uh, we have EC2, RDS, Elasticash, and OpenSearch. Um, and for each of these, we give you a breakdown of your existing usage for that service, as well as I'll flash to what we'll look at in a little bit, your opportunity, which is really going to be the, the meat and bones of the, the dashboard. Awesome. So just to highlight some of the things that you can see in looking at your existing usage, because you obviously want to be able to justify why you want to continue your Graviton journey. Um, we have things like your previous month spend by processor as well as your previous month usage by processor. So you can firstly understand what is your current Graviton adoption. You can also pick out some really cool insights here. Like you'll notice our spend is 34% Graviton, but our usage is 42% Graviton. So already here, we're mm -hmm. seeing some of the efficiency gains that we're getting by Graviton because of the list price uh, difference and how much cheaper Graviton is. One of my other favorite numbers here is just our previous month savings. And this is going to be a conservative estimate because we are comparing to the latest generation of Intel. Um, so say if you are using a C7G, we would be comparing that to the C6I. Um, so if you had moved from maybe a fifth generation or a fourth generation, that savings would be even larger as well. Those on threes out there and get rid of them. Get exactly. rid of them. Can't, can't be on third gen anymore. No. Uh, we then have some insights here about some of your account usage, um, as well as just some deep dives into your Graviton usage. So you can get an understanding of what instance families you're using, um, as well as your unit cost of your Graviton usage, as well as get an understanding of your breakdown and coverage by month. And so if you were doing a, a Graviton migration, this is a great way for you to be able to see some of the impact and the movement and adoption of Graviton, uh, either in all of your accounts, or you can use some of the filters here at the top to identify some of the specific workloads that you may be moving. Awesome. We've got a, a quick question in the chat that I think relates pretty closely to what you're, you're just mentioning. Can we add application tags to hone in on specific workloads? 
think this might be a little bit of customization, but definitely within the realm of possibility. Absolutely. And I think that that's a really important thing to do once you deploy this dashboard as well as all the other cloud intelligence dashboards. You can go in and add those tags and there's a, a similar approach for adding those for all of those uh, different dashboards. Those are linked in our FAQ. Our, it's actually in the customization section of the Workshop Studio. And so if you deploy this, definitely recommend checking that out as well as all the other customizations, such as bringing in all your organizational data from the organization's API uh, that also comes from the same data collector. Awesome. Um, just looking at some of our other visuals for your existing usage, you can see some of your savings by month. So if you want to report out um, some of your savings past just the previous month that we showed before, you can get that as well, as well as some exploring that you can do with some of these pivots. Um, so if say, maybe I was the account owner for account A, um, and I'd recently migrated over these M7Gs, I'd be able to look at some of the usage that we have, as well as some of the savings that we're seeing by month. Um, if I want to be more granular with that. These kind of views, I think, are really exciting, especially if you're in kind of a larger organization where not everybody is in the uh, in the Graviton train yet, uh, because the folks that are, you can really show those savings per instance family, per project that they're modernizing, like loud and clear, which makes a very good case to other folks who are maybe waiting a little bit before they do that modernization work. Exactly. And we tried to build in a lot of flexibility here so that you could really dial into to specific workloads. Um, and you'll see some of that as well when we don't go down here and look at some of the Graviton opportunities, because as I mentioned earlier, that's going to be where our, our real uh, use is for, I think, for some of our customers. Um, so right here, what you see is we have um, some things that you can play with down here um, and make this really interactive. Um, so what we have is some of our potential monthly Graviton savings, as well as the normalized instance hours that we are saving moving to Graviton. Now, we can start to customize this a little bit by setting our target Graviton coverage, as well as our target Graviton efficiency gain. And one of the reasons that we do this is that it's going to be very hard to move to 100% Graviton adoption uh, from zero or wherever you are. And in fact, for most customers, that's probably not going to be even possible. Um, so we want to give you the opportunity to size this. Maybe we are currently at 42%. Maybe we want to move uh, up 10% and go to 52%. That will update as well. We also have this efficiency gain slider, and this will um, help you change some of the performance gains that I was mentioning a little bit earlier for Graviton uh, that you see versus Intel. So one of the questions that we get a lot about the KPI dashboard as well is from customers is just like, where do I put these dials? How do I figure out where I want to put them? Um, especially with the efficiency gain, I think that the target coverage is at least decently intuitive to conceptualize, but how should I, as a customer, go about thinking about where to put this efficiency gain target at? Yeah. That's a great question. And I think that that's one of the things that customers should spend the most time on when they're looking at this. We give a lot of information here, uh, both in this uh, little text box as well as down here to kind of guide you. Um, but really, this is going to come down to um, what application you're migrating, how that is compiled, um, as well as some of your own testing. So as you can see down here, we have a lot of guidance on languages that um, are easier versus harder to move to Graviton. Um, some of the ones that are easier are things like Node.js, Python, PHP, a lot of those lower language or lower level languages. Um, Java is also um, really easy. We have our own um, uh, JDK uh, called Coretto for, for Java um, that are, are some of the easiest and will also have some of the biggest efficiency gains. Um, some that are a little bit higher are like lower level C code. Um, and then things like Windows don't have vendable ARM options yet. Um, so this will help you give an idea of what some of the efficiency gains might be there. But again, we really emphasize that you should be out and going and testing some of these workloads. Um, and so then you can go in and set some of the efficiency gains that you're seeing within your testing. Um, maybe you're running an ETL job and you see a 20% reduction in the number of hours required to complete that job you can set this to 20%. Or maybe you see it closer to maybe 12%. 
you can see how that will update some of these so that you understand the number of hours you're saving, the amount of money you're saving, um, and get a good justification for, for some of the effort required there. Got it. That testing piece, I think, is really, really key because, at least in my experience, when I've seen customers kind of go along this journey, sure, you get the price drop from you know, the list price difference, but it really is that right sizing activity that you do afterwards with the more performant offerings that is going to really move the needle on savings. Um, I think one of my customers saw like 40% reduction in the number of instances that they had to run after they moved to Graviton, which is huge, wild. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I was referring to this earlier, but you know, not only do you have those performance gains, but also because of the way that we've built these chips, you can push them a lot harder. So while doing those testing, I really recommend that, that you push those to the limit and really understand some of the efficiency gains that you can get uh, using ARM and using Graviton. Some of the other visuals we have here refer down to how you might be able to de determine eligibility for some of your workloads. Mm -hmm. um, and we really give you um, a lot of choose your own adventure here because for EC2, this can be uh, really dependent on what you are willing to do, um, as well as some of the things uh, in your uh, environment. So some of the things that you can see here are, we're calling likely ineligible, are things like Windows usage or something that's covered by an RI. Also that would be considered likely ineligible would be things um, like spot that we have listed over here or instant savings plans things that you are going to want to put additional consideration into if you're going to be moving to Graviton. And I know, Savannah, you work a lot with purchasing RIs and SPs with some of our customers, but you want to make sure that if you do that modernization, you're not leaving those to be underutilized um, so that you have those commitments. Yeah, I think that the key thing to think about here, especially when you're looking at this visual, is it is potentially ineligible, it's not necessarily ineligible. So we see reserved instance on there. Those could be convertible RIs. And if that's the case, you can kind of do the analysis work to figure out what you're gonna need to do to convert them. Um, if you do switch to Graviton, it also might just be as simple as kind of timing or co-timing a modernization activity or a big Graviton push with renewal of leases and moving to a compute savings plan or something a little bit more flexible to support that journey. And then kind of doubling back down on the more specific options like instant savings plans and standard RIs once you are at like a little bit more of an end state. Totally. Those are the strategies I love. That's that's why they pay you the big bucks. <laughs> the medium bucks. <laughs> exactly. Um, so some other visuals we have are what your other your potential savings would have been in the last six months had you had this level of Graviton adoption. Again, looking for more data points to give your engineering teams or give your finance teams to incentivize some of these Graviton moves, um, as well as another version of these instance explorers. Um, so here we've got all of our different various usage types. Let's say that I am the account owner for account A. Um, doing these check mark is all wrong. Um, and I have some applications that are running on these M5s. We've got both the 4XLs and the 8XLs. I can, again, very similar to our pivot above, really isolate this workload and say, all right, if I want to move um, this specific application that uses these instance families, I can save $565 per month. Again, really go into justifying some of the engineering um, work that would be required and understand when your break even point would be based on the amount of work um, that would put into that, as well as calculating out longstanding savings potentials um, based on how long the application might live on. Got it. We've got, we've got a lot of questions in the chat today. Um, who would you say that this dashboard is targeted for? It looks like it's kind of a mix of engineering and ops based on what you're demonstrating. Like there's there's certainly a, a deep level of granularity that we can pull out of here, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts about who you want to be your ideal consumer. Absolutely. And, and on optics, we're also talking to a lot of these ranges of personas as well. So um, I think it starts with like some of our finance and, and FinOps people who may not understand Graviton as much, we're helping to show some of the savings that you can achieve and also trying to provide a lot of information like some of these adoption links um, and how to understand some of the efficiency gains. We're providing you with a lot of material to arm you to, for those conversations with engineers. 
Um, on the flip side, if you are an engineer using this dashboard, you have a lot of tools to isolate your specific workloads, like we're looking at this pivot here, so that you can understand and maybe create your own path of maybe you're a junior engineer and you want to save your organization money. You can create maybe this initiative um, and really understand how much that would be and then become a hero because you're starting to save all this money. Um, so really it could be for, for any types of players out there. Awesome. Um, we've got about five minutes left and I do want to touch on some of the non EC2 tabs because I know you, you tossed that little Easter egg in about how those are a little bit easier to migrate. Can you tell me more about exactly. that? Yeah. And, and Matt alluded to that as well. Um, we do have tabs for, for all these managed services, um, but they are, are very much the same. Um, as the EC2. So we have some of your existing usage that you can explore, but where we'll focus is on the opportunity. And because I was mentioning these are managed services, the movement to this is much more granular and much more specific. So for RDS, for example, we have some guidance here around what is eligible. So you have three different database engines that are eligible for Graviton. That's MySQL, Postgres, and MariaDB. And then depending on if you're running RDS or Aurora, you, the version number that is required in order to move to Graviton straight away. So you can see within some of the accounts that I'm running, I have 11 databases that are eligible. 10 of those databases, I can move tonight to Graviton um, with no work required. And then I have one database in there that I'm gonna need to go into and perform the upgrade on first before um, I do any of that. Uh, movement to Graviton. And so this is where you may need to go in and check third party dependencies and make sure that that's okay uh, for anything that you're using. But you really want to start on this eligible databases section because this is some of the groups that should already be on Graviton and you can move right away. And I was mentioning you can do this directly within the console or your infrastructure's code. Really, really easy to move all of these managed services over um, and there are a lot of strategies published. Um, we also have a Graviton getting started guide as well that maybe we can link to Savannah um, that gives you a lot of prescription on how you can do this easily. Um, but we give you a breakdown of what your savings could be um, immediately versus which some of these require an update um, as well as a breakdown based on your normalized instance hours. And again, wouldn't be the same without the ability to deep dive using some of the pivots that we have. So we can filter out, filter out maybe only our immediately eligible databases. And we can look through this and see our exact resource IDs, uh, what engine they're on, what version number they're on. And maybe I pick out something like this database three that's running a 12X large. You can see that this is the largest savings, um, almost two and a half thousand dollars per month for just this one database that's currently eligible. So you can go in here and get a really good idea of what are some of the resources that are going to have the most bang for your buck. We know which accounts it's in. We know the exact resource ID. So we can use this table to reach out to some of our engineers, maybe as a FinOps persona, um, or if you're an engineer, filter for your specific accounts or tags, uh, like we'd mentioned earlier in the show, um, and really easily pick out what it is to move. Um, and just to plug some of our other services, we have some of the breakdowns uh, for ElastCache with that eligibility, um, as well as our open search eligibility um, as well listed down here. Um, awesome. And with ElastCache and open search, all versions are going to be eligible. Um, so you really are, should be looking for everything um, in ElastCache and open search, or I should say all engines. Uh, you just need to look at what version number you're on. Awesome. So getting to the end here, but I've got a good question to, to close it out and to get the folks a little bit more info. What's next here? And can we follow along? Yeah, and that's a great call to action. We're going to have a lot of new services that we're looking to do, add more managed services, as well as add some new views. Um, so this is very early. We launched this dashboard just in the last two months. So definitely encourage people to become early adopters play around with it. We do have an alias in the lab where you can reach out to us. We'd love to have some conversations with people about how they use it, um, as well as continue to update the dashboard because we will have a lot of new releases soon with cool features. Awesome.